everything is shining run welcome to the 2v2 matchup on a beautiful map anorian before this gets started i need to tell you something we have currently a 2v2 tournament going on with 40 players 20 teams i will be streaming most of the games on my twitch channel twitch tv slash beyond standards if you haven't followed me there already you can find the link for that in the description of the video thank you very much okay we have the gonna play a Mateusz, his ally the red Isengard player zemix their versus the white Isengard player seo and his ally the orange model player ericsson so pretty decent mordor eisen versus eisen and gondor good matchup i like this Gollum, uh, you should not be wasting time dealing with this Uruks, in my opinion. You should try to either catch the soldiers, but what you should be doing instead is to kill uh, some of the workers, you know? Okay, big war chant. Team play. Land will be used, but remember you're against Gondor, man. Gondor can cover this, right? Gondor can cover this, and he will be covering this. Now, he will have not only the war chant damage and armor, but he will, e he will even have more armor from the Alvin Wood. In this Uruks will try to defend. Mordor has to build a slaughterhouse, and that's exactly what he's doing. So Uruk pit furnace opening. I don't like this one in 2v2s. I'm a big fan of the double furnace opening. This way you can make sure that your eco is gonna be good. And also, we could no war chant here means the Uruks won't be able to destroy this Lamry Mill. So it's a phenomenal start, you know. If I'm being honest with you, for the Gondor Isengard team. Gondor is building more and more blacksmiths and farms in the castle. Soldiers almost level 2 and farm has been captured. So Gondor has 3 farms outside, Mordor has only 1. Which also might be destroyed very very soon. Luckily for them they have the better side when you play evil, the right side of the map Anorian is a bit better. Because the pro towers are protecting this, for example this tower is able to protect this and this tower is able to protect this. And also I don't like the slaughterhouse here because you need the wood bonus of the lumber mills to build up the base way faster. So good eco for the Red Isengard player Zemix and this player straight up rushing Boromir. Boromir not bad because you can provide leadership for your Isengard combos later on, that's pretty good. And your ally can also go for Lourdes. So if you don't know, Lourdes' leadership and Boromir's leadership are pretty much identical, which is kind of ironic because Lourdes killed Boromir <laughs> in the films. But in this, they are like, you know, the same coin, you know? Evil Boromir is Lourdes and good Boromir is Gondor Boromir. Okay, Hobbit, a Gollum has to engage, but I don't know about fighting on the Elven Wood, to be honest, because, you know, it's kind of dangerous. There comes the Vorchan from Zemix. He knows that his ally won't have any horses anytime soon, because Matthews is a player who likes to go for the infantry, which, of course, is possible in the patch 2.2. And on a small map like Anorian, it's doable too, because there are only two settlements you need to be protecting, you know what I mean? The only downside is you can't really pressure your opponent's settlements, and for that reason, Mordor Isengard might get rich and it will be kind of difficult. But also you will have lots of strength in the lead game. Boro gives you crazy leadership with level 4. You know, you have Warchan for him from your ally. He has also gone for Lourdes. Again, 60% damage from Lourdes, 60% damage from Boromir. Can stack with each other, so you have 120% damage plus the Warchan, 170. And Faramir can be used to creep this Warclair, for example. And he's going for the combos too. So they will have double combos. But again, you are against Mordor, who will have Witch King and Drummer Troll too, plus Eye of Sauron. So yeah, we will see how it goes. Berserker will be recruited. Orcs are, you know, kind of struggling, but they will be able to finish off the Slaughterhouse, no problemo. Lourdes has been also recruited for the White Isengard player, Seal. But I think he will be a little bit too late. This Lord should be able to get the last hit and get level 3. This creep is gone, and this is the last remaining creep, which obviously Boromir is trying to take. Paramir was trying to defend this with the, you know, horse and trampling down the units. And he should be the one who gets the last hit here. Because you want to get him to level 5, you know, that's what's important. Creep has been secured by the red gonna play, uh, by the red Isengard player, I believe. No! Actually, yeah, I think he messed up a lot. He gave, he gave the last hit to the Uruks instead of for the, for the Lourdes. That's why Lourdes couldn't get level 3. Uh, but Boro got level almost 6. That's big, you know, <laughs> that's very, very big. Orcs will also feed some power points. Isengard taking one part of the money, no problemo. Not enough workers or not any workers for Z-Mix around the settlement, so he needs to fill up the lumber mill as soon as possible. And Lourdes getting level 3, two more levels required. 
for the level 5 leadership. In the meantime, Berserker, even on the you know enemy land, is very, very strong. It's a great counter to Swartman, especially against weak Swartman like Oryx, but like also even against Uruks, you know. And this Isengard player going straight up for the armory. So you want to make combos because his ally is Mordor, and Mordor can get crazy leadership in about two minutes. Like 30 seconds recruit time, you need like three more trolls plus on this one 26 seconds, so you should be good to go. So for that reason, it's important that Boro uh, and Farah get leadership unlocked because Lourdes still needs two levels while Farah only needs one level. Armory combos will be recruited from both the players. One, two, three, four, five blacksmiths in total. At this point of the game, it's actually not bad if you demolish this one, one farm level one and replace it with a blacksmith because you need the full steel bonus of the blacksmith. You want to get the 40%. The jump from five blacksmiths to six blacksmiths is actually kind of significant. You get 10% more you know, discount on your upgrades and you will have a lot of combos. You will need ranges later on. Each upgrade, heavy armor, banner and also fire arrow will benefit from the 10% extra. Combos around this location. Lourdes has to be careful, and he is too late to be careful. Two combos, but, but they can't approach this. But no heavy armor yet. No heavy armor yet. Lourdes actually dealing good damage because they have no heavy armor and no uh, war chant. Lourdes will die though. However, this Lourdes didn't get any experience from this. That's kind of unfortunate. Industry will be used, and Mordor might lose the middle camp. That's a big investment of cash to lose it like this. Isengard has to bring the combos as soon as possible. He lost the Lourdes. Uh, Lourdes will be kind of cheap to be revived. It's only a level 1 hero. Uh, but I think before the combos can make it here, he might even lose the entire middle camp. However, this army has no heavy armor yet. Because um, the orcs keep pressuring the Lumber Mills, while this Lumber Mills from the Mordor Isengard team are kind of pretty much untouched, right? The city has been destroyed. Um, Warchan is available for this Isengard player too. Zemix has it on cooldown, but this Isengard player can use Warchant and with the eye they have 100% damage leadership. So now you want to play around the cooldowns, you want to disengage uh, when you see this, because your Warchant is about to be go off and then you have only Boromir leadership and eventually Faramir, which also is level 5 now, but your Lourdes is still only level 4. Now they were able to save the middle camp, you know, repairing this will cost you a thousand, that's a long, a big investment. If you want to play it the right way, what Mordor needs to do, in this situation, it's very clear. If you see your opponents, both Eisen and you know Eisen and Gondor, going for the combos, your natural and best response would be to make double siege works in the middle and spam catapults because that's the biggest counter to non-mobile units. And because Gondor has no horses, there is no real big threat. They can't just go to your catapults because there is an army of your ally protecting your catapults and if they stand and fight, your katas will smash everything and this is what you should be doing. But you can also try save up for the Witch King. Sita is almost back up. Lourdes is about to be revived. Level 1 only takes you a minute. And Eisen has to get money, you know. And the orcs are being annoying. The orcs are everywhere. That's why map control is so important. This army is looking very strong though. Look at them glow boys, you know. Faramir, Boromir. <laughs> and Lourdes all, all about level 4. Warchant has been used from Zemix. Uh, now, even more glow. They have only the drummer troll. Can this be enough? Even the Forgondor ability with the new animation. That means the combos are dealing now 40% more damage. So 40% from this plus 60 it's able to stack. It's 100% damage plus Warchan 150% damage. And when Lords gets level 5, it's going to be 210% more damage. 210% damage, just for you to understand how much this is, is it would just one-shot Witch King. It would just one-shot the trolls, you know? That's how strong it would be, especially with this firepower. We have like three Gondor combos, three Isengard combos. It's crazy strong. Crazy strong. Warchan has been used. There is only one drama troll. Lourdes will be crippling somebody. And the trolls are going in. I don't know why they are not focusing on the trolls. They are chasing down the Lourdes. There comes the land from somebody. Whoever uses land makes a big mistake. Big mistake. Who is using land? It's Zemix using land. Mateusz covering the land. 
and I believe Mordor has used the land, so it's the land from Mateusz, obviously, because Isengard player Cicio doesn't have the land just yet, they can just bail, it's not, it's not a big deal, it's not like a very important location to fight for, because if they buy the middle camp, this land will disappear too, it's very close to the middle camp, and whatever is in the area of a castle, outpost, or also a camp, will disappear immediately once it's captured. Eye of Sauron will be used, they are trying to rotate way too much, you want to destroy the heroes, Farami, Boromir, that's your target. And there comes the uh, summon of the Rohirrim. You can use the Roar ability. There comes the land, and that's what I'm talking about. He by the middle, and the land disappears just like that. And it's a two power point investment. Roar will be used. Now they got to be running into different directions. Immediately building up the Valdi statue. The Lords is very, 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 very... <laughs> Uh, you know low he will eventually die he will die to the cripple of this lord who just got level five but he is kind of in a different dimension he wanted to be joining this army if the well is building up it will be so much healing for the gondor isengard combos and for that reason it's the best to just disengage now they have even a greater amount of leadership plus the control of the heart of the map anorian which obviously is the middle camp ladies and gentlemen okay holy moly okay saruman is gonna be there very soon this lord's got level four that means also very close to be level five this you know or could be used also saruman incoming from the isengard player zemix faramir has been killed before he will be revived first gondor keeps making more and more combos this time with the soldier and the ranger more damage obviously rangers in the back but i think you don't need combos if you have like two three combos you want to get rangers exclusively for the maximum firepower because your ally has also uruks hike my uruk crossbow man combo very thick and strong tough endurance combos you know in the front and your rangers in the back can actually shred because when you combine units you can't switch formation anymore so combining rangers means you can't use their wedge formation in skirmish formation anymore which means more damage output okay mordor has the witch king so just quick math okay 50 person from drummer 50 person from the witch king plus 50 person from the eye of sauron this is how much damage more that more can offer you okay plus you have warchan that's 200 percent damage but unlike this lords or paramia witch king and drummer can give you both armor and damage while Boro can give you only damage farah can give you only armor witch king gives you both Plus, he debuffs you too. So when Hewa is close to you, you will lose your armor. This is a big army. That's going to be a big clash, boys. Holy moly. Okay, the positioning is the key to victory. Your heroes, watch out. They will die. Don't go crazy with your Saruman. Just put them behind your combo so you can give leadership to them. Okay, boys. So now let's see what happens. <laughs> Warchan has been used, Drummer has to be coming closer, Witch King, everything is shining, Fort Gondor has been used, Catapult shot from downtown, I don't know what is happening, I see, I think Lourdes got crippled, uh, like Saruman got crippled, why would you go, use the heal, look, heroes are leveling up like crazy with the combat experience, there comes the rain, this rain is from CCO. Uh, Z-Mix doesn't have the rain yet, no rain means he will get crushed hardcore around this location, you don't even need to cover the land, level 10 combos, the combat experience, this is so crazy, you know, because Eye of Sauron gives you 50, Drummer gives you 100, and also Saruman gives you, all of that is able to stay, did you see Saruman leveling up from level 5 to level 8 in a second, this is even nerfed, it was way more in 1.06 or in 1.03, the of last official patch of EA games. And we are planning to nerf it even more. Now the middle camp is exposed. Reen is still active. Zemix needs around a quarter for his own Reen, which will negate the whole strength and also the, the power of Mordor, which lies, of course, in those three drummer throws. Beautiful shots with the catapults. And he's demolishing everything, everything to not feed even more power points to his opponent. Mordor, here in this situation, is definitely a sportive ally. So we are not expecting crazy power point advantages from Mordor. But it will, of course, it would be great if he gets to 7 power points, you know, to unlock his darkness. For even more leadership. There is a, uh, you know, slaughterhouse <laughs> from Zemix, uh, level 9. 
sorry, level 9 Saruman. This Saruman was able to get, a, get away, you know, level 5, level... And the next fight is going to be looking good for the Isengard Gondo team though, because Zemix will have his Saruman. They will have their leadership back because Rain is going to be on cooldown very soon. And on top of that, they will have their own Rain. So it's all good. This combo is very strong. There comes the War Chant. Um, yeah, he has the power points now for the Rain. Will he use it? He needs to use it. He needs to use it immediately. He will be using it now. No more land. There comes the Roar. Beautiful Roar. The Rohirrim have to go into different directions. But the Rain is active. That means you need to disengage. Now, the question is, whose land is this, you know? This is the big question. If it's the land from Mordor, it's bad. But if it's the land from Isengard, Zemix, he can just, you know, go over this land and regain his leadership bonuses. Now, it's all about playing the Rain cooldown kind of situation. And Mordor needs to bring definitely more and more catapults. For that reason, it's always recommended to have like two, three siege wards because he should have, realistically speaking, the money. There is a farm next to the stroll who doesn't care. Uh, he has no blacksmiths. That's why the catapults, they cost 900 each. It's a lot of money. Um, what, what is happening? You, they are making bad choices. Level 10 combos are able to survive. The leadership is there. Leadership is not there. That's the main difference here. Difference here. Two catapults are incoming. But they have also even crazy amount of armor leadership, dude. Saruman, 40. Faramir, 40. 50 from the war chant. This is such a crazy, crazy amount of armor leadership. You need like four catapult shots to kill like one combo, which is a lot. Because catapults are not like shooting in light speed. But you see, they are still dealing significant amount of damage to this units. Even only the Uruks are very tanky. Beautiful shot. Mordor is also getting power points. Saruman got crippled once again. I don't know what, how Saruman got crippled there. Uh, there comes the heal from Gondor. Full commitment on Saruman. He's going to be able to fireball them. But nobody's focusing the catap catapults. That's the will of Saruman coming in clutch from Seo. Um, and he's, getting, he's still getting chunked. That's a big, big, big commitment. And he might even be able to survive if he just keeps running away. Run, 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 run. And the wizard will not pay today. Dude, bad choices all over again. No way. Kill the catapult. What is Faramir doing? dying that's the that's the answer to your question right there and yeah catapult will kill itself okay <laughs> all right rain is on cooldown for zemix big cooldown and co will have his rain available very very soon okay so mordor crazy partner into v2s even though we nerfed mordor a lot actually combat experience used to be way higher than that and catapults used to be way more broken than that but it's still Meet to sport allies, you know, with the insane amount of leadership it can provide. It's a leadership based faction because it has no armor. So if Mordor would have own armor upgrades, it would be the strongest faction low key, right? And for that reason, it has because it has no armor, it has lots of leadership. Now, in 2v2s, your army has no armor, yes, but your allies' army has armor, and you have still this crazy leadership in which you can all stack with each other. It's so strong. Big combos, big armies, lots of leveled up units. You know, level 9, almost level 10. Level 10 here. Incredible strong. Can I have to see what, what can Ganaf do against such reckless seat? Like, I think you can't get even close to this army. If he pays attention, he just needs to right click you and you are dead. What Gondor should be doing is getting trebuchet. That's, that's, the, that's the best thing you could do. You know, trebuchet will not care about your leadership, it will still hurt you a lot. 13 power points for Co. Mordor is almost darkness. Almost darkness. One more shot. Beautiful hit from the catapult. We have the ability, but the rain is available for Co. Keep that in mind. We, we hear the will of Saruman. Kill the troll. 16. Ganaf is approaching. Boom. Beautiful visa plus. There comes the rain. Kill the troll already, dude. Oh, he stole them, but he died right after. Oh boy, what is happening? And yeah, that's happening. CO has now the Balrog summon, dude. CO has now the Balrog summon. I, I like the way the wizards approach. They were kind of trying to go in simultaneously, but Isengard made the right calls. So in those situations, it's better to focus down. Ah, uh, he didn't even blast. If you 
in a, you know in the situation what CEO was in it's better to focus down Saruman because he can be way more devastating than Gandalf him in being able to steal like half of your combos is way more uh, wars to deal with than your the enemy Gandalf plus in your army but GG well played, what a fiesta boys, big flights, I hope you enjoyed this, if you did, you know, like the video, subscribe for more, I will see you next time, until then, take care of yourself, keep hitting like a truck, and as always, stay beyond standards, peace out boys.